Locked On Texans, your daily Houston Texans podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome in to this installment. It's a quick hit. Oh, shit. <laughs> you are Locked On Texans, your daily Houston Texans podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's going on, Locked On Texans fans? I'm John, some sports guy Hickman. Of course, I'm joined by Cody Davis. This is not a normal uh, full-length Locked On <laughs> podcast today. This is what you guys know we call the quick hit of the day. And Zach Cunningham, Cody, has been released by the Houston Texans. Uh, one year removed after signing his big extension. Uh, Zach Cunningham was due $12.5 million this year. I believe that he made around 9.6 of that so far. That includes a, a suspension and a half. That includes limited playing time. That includes everything that surrounded the ups and downs with Zach Cunningham and the Houston Texan franchise this year. And it's important to talk about this. And before I hand it over to you, Cody, because I know you were at the press conferences on Wednesday, we had opportunity to be in the building as the news dropped. But there's one thing, and I'm pretty sure that you're going to mention it, but there's one thing that sits kind of well with me. And I look at Zach Cunningham and I look at that contract, and that contract was created in a room with the likes of Bill O'Brien, who's no longer here, but also Jack Easterby, who was overseeing those contracts. And Houston had a hard time uh, maybe to maneuver, getting away from that contract. Uh, I think that's the main reason why Houston may have not been able to get, find a trade partner uh, for Zach Cunningham. However, looking at this decision, taking it all in, and looking at how he's played this year and the the in, how can I put the inefficiency in, in his in his coverage. That uh, excuse me, Zach Cunningham's game in 2020, 21, and this generation of linebackers that can cover their ass off, and understanding the, the the turmoil and friction between the two parties and Zach Cunningham and the Houston Texans, I'm not mad that he was you know moved on from. I'm not at all, and I, I'd be a liar if I would sit here and and say I'm shocked that they moved on from Zach Cunningham. That's not the case for me, Cody. The case is. Was he not valuable enough to receive a six-round draft pick? And these are the, some of the questions that I've had, right? We've seen the Houston Texans move on from players and basically get nothing in return. And I think that with the amount of players coming out in this year's draft, due to the senior eligibility of last year, we have a lot of more players coming out. Six-round picks are very valuable, in my opinion this year because you're going to be able to find guys who know how to play football whether that be for special teams whether that be a gunner whether that be somebody you need to rotate in and out or you know you may be able to find a quality starter who knows and Houston is in a position where they're going to have to feel needs but was he not able to get anything back and I do look at his contract as I mentioned before also I do want to let you guys know that the Houston Texans will as of right now have about $35.3 million in debt cap, debt money charges for next year. And as mentioned before, Jack Easterby was in the, middle, in the middle of those contracts and personnel decisions last year. So it kind of seems like, well, we got rid of the Jack Easterby guy, and maybe there is going to be movement at the top soon. But there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Zach Cunningham is no longer a Houston Texan. And he will be picked up by some team that believes they can use him in whatever way they want to see him. And, John, I agree with you. I'm not upset by the Zach Cunningham release. I, you, John, how, first of all, how many times did I hint at this situation? Let me let me just say that. <laughs> like, yeah, you know, times. there was uh, several times. And Zach Cunningham is a little bit different from all the other guys that the Houston Texans departed from over the last couple of months because – 
you know, and it, it also goes with it, it also goes in at the same time the problem that I have with this situation. But Zach Cunningham, with the amount of money that he was given, you take a look at his play on the field this season alone. He was nowhere near the good player that he was in 2020. He was nowhere near the solid player that he was in 2019. He was nowhere near the promising player that he showcased during his rookie season. What was that, in 2018 or 2017? I think it was 2017. Um, I believe he came in the same year with Deshaun Watson. But yeah. I say all that just to say Cunningham's production, on-field production for the Houston Texans in 2021 was god-awful. There was moments where he did showcase that he could still be that player, but it wasn't consistent. And the number one issue with Zach Cunningham was his character. He came off as a guy throughout this whole entire season. He just did not care. And regardless how you feel about him getting suspended, not once but twice, there were moments where he was doing stuff behind the scenes where you got to look to yourself and say, all right, Zach, look, we not all for this whole culture, get behind the Texans culture and everything, but at some point you have to be an adult and be responsible to take oh, care yeah. of your needs, I you know? Agree. And, you know, and the main one that I'm going to talk about is the mixed COVID test that resulted in his suspension this past Sunday. Now, do I think that is worth a suspension? No. I'm pretty sure if that was any other player especially an important piece like we thought Zach Cunningham was, I'm pretty sure David Cully, Nick Asirio, or whoever's running the show could have and should have reworked, rescheduled his COVID test. But at the same time, as a human, as a grown man, if they tell you to be at a certain place at this particular time, you have to be there. And when by the you way, you are getting paid millions. Exactly. And by the way, I saw a moment right in front of me throughout training camp where Zach Cunningham did show up to practice late. And I'm talking about hella late. And he had like a little interesting discussion. I, I can't remember if it was with Nick or Cully or whoever the case might be, but he had an interesting discussion, like literally a couple feet away from me where I was standing during training camp. So I, I say all I just say, Zach Cunningham isn't innocent throughout this whole thing because throughout this whole entire season, throughout this whole entire off season, he has been doing stuff to make people say, okay, I understand it. But my biggest issue with this is, is the reasoning that the Houston Texans are putting out there. When we asked David Cully, what are your thoughts about the Zach Cunningham release? He says that the team has standards and every player on this team has to meet these standards. I understand that. I get it. But once again, you're looking at a situation where I, I can understand it a little bit more if this was a was was just one time that it was that that this is the only time that the Texans release somebody due to a culture fit or standards issues. But with the exception of Whitney Merciless, Anthony Miller, <laughs> Zach Cunningham, Charles Aminahu, you you know, um you suspended Justin Reed because he quote unquote vote broke a violation, broke a standard. What is the standard at this point? And not only that, when you have multiple players breaking your rules, breaking your standards, not living up to whatever culture fit you are trying to put out there for your organization, at some point, you got to think to yourself and look in yourself and look at yourself in the mirror and say, what am I doing wrong that is part of the reason why we continuously have these issues Week in and week out. Lonnie Johnson is another name that I want to throw in there because apparently wow. part of his bench was due to him not meeting a particular standard. And not only that, I could kind of understand this standard a little bit more if this was a 10-2 and two team that was competing for a championship, competing for a playoffs. But when you're a 2-10, that is where the issue I have with this release. Because like I just mentioned, he isn't the first. And with five games left into the left into the season, he's not going to be the last. I would not be to be surprised come Sunday or next Sunday or the Sunday after we be sitting here talking about another player that got suspended over something so foolish. That that's my biggest issue with the Zach Cunningham. I look at some of the player quotes, and it you know it, it I, outside of John us, Bernard, Rex Burkhead, and <laughs> Brandon Cooks. They was terrible. They they would have been better off saying no comment, bro. 
Right, and we can, as I was going to mention, we can make our own speculation of it, but Brandon Cooks, you know, he was asked about the reaction of Zach Cunningham, and he said it's internal. That's the way I'll keep it with all due respect, right? And even John Grenard. John Grenard was asked about Zach Cunningham being released. He mentioned that it was tough. Zach's my dog. The team made a decision. You hate to see it. He's a good player. It's not going to be the last stop for him. It sucks, but we still got to play ball. He also mentioned that the Texans on the standards, the Texan standards, excuse me, it's kind of an unspoken rule. What the standard is, it's kind of self-explanatory. I, 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 okay, well, somebody explain it to ourselves because, I, you know, I've said this a lot of time, guys, before we get out of here for, for today's quick hit. There's only two cultures. There's only two standards in the NFL, man. Everything else are subsidiaries. But there's winning and there's losing. Now, we can look at the New England Patriots. And this is the first time that I would like to mention them on side of the Houston Texans and not call them little brother, big brother. But their standard for 20 years, even now, as they are the number one team in the AFC. All right, stop it now. Stop it now. But their standard (laughs) for 20 years were winners. Now, what happened under that? Well, you had... Uh, you had the, the the cheating scandals, the uh, stealing Flake signs, Gate. the deflate gate, the, the stealing signs. You had everything that was going on with multiple players on that roster. But, you know, it, it really wasn't discussed that much due to the fact of, well, they win a lot. They win the Super Bowls. And when I look at the Houston Texans with this standard that they are creating, right, I'm not even going to say trying to create because when you remove players – From your franchise, you are creating something. Whether that turned out to be good or bad, we'll wait and see. But when you when you create this standard of culture, it comes with you being a loser right now. And I'm not saying this about a particular player. I'm just speaking towards the franchise as a whole. This franchise is in a losing state. That's what happens when you go through a rebuild. And this rebuild is a real rebuild. I think some people thought that this rebuild would be a one and done thing, right? One year, then mm-hmm. we'll be back more competitive next year. I'm not maybe, sure. What this team maybe maybe if they I, was able to go through this rebuild with Deshaun, I'm not sure <laughs> where this team is going to be next year. But this team is in a losing state. Zach Cunningham, who, as mentioned early in the show, is not a good new generation linebacker. He can get you tackles, but a lot of those tackles are upfield. He's, he's not filling his hole correctly. He cannot cover. He was in a losing state. And when you have two losers in the pod, a lot of dysfunction is going to happen. Be sure to check out today's crossover edition with the Locked On Seahawks. That's going to be a fun one. Subscribe to the YouTube page, of course, at Locked On Texas. And we'll see you guys when we see you.